connectivity and entertainment major considerations on virtually every RVer's list these days. On this week's show, we thought we would visit the leader in keeping you connected anywhere you go. Also, got a fire going? Kate Dunbar, our campground gourmet, shows us how relatively easy it is to make a scrumptious dessert even when you're out camping. Later, Mark Polk from RV Education 101 shows us his top five essential items for every trip. These stories and our Care Camp Super Noble Raffle. Rolling on TV is sponsored by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating over 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed captioning, we're available, is sponsored by Forest River. Begin the journey. Even though our viewers will tell you, we love RVing because it allows us to get out, get away from it all, and enjoy a simpler lifestyle, they still want to stay connected and in touch no matter where they are. And if you think we're kidding, go and check out any new RV and see how many you find that aren't wired up for television and Wi-Fi. Today, we visit WineGuard and sit down with company president and COO, Grant Whipple, to learn all about the company and its products, past, present, and future. Weingard uh, started in 1953 uh, by John Weingard, and uh, basically um, he wanted to receive uh, television signals when that was the only uh, way to communicate, the only medium uh, from Chicago. Uh, so he um, developed um, one of the first multi-channel TV antennas, uh, pointed it at Chicago, received the broadcast from there, and uh, that was sort of the beginning uh, because, uh, you know, neighbors, friends heard about it, that they were able to receive television from, from that far away. And um, the rest was sort of history, obviously. Uh, he repeated that and uh, made other antenna systems uh, for other people in Burlington. And that's how it all started. And in case you're wondering, the company still manufactures those roof antennas today. Now, from there, of course, uh, the next real step was uh, C-band satellite. So if you remember the really large uh, 8 to 12 foot dishes that um, rural America was, was putting in their backyards, uh, that was uh, Weingart. And so we moved from TV reception to uh, satellite TV reception. Um, from there, we moved on to, uh, as the technologies improved, to much smaller uh, DBS satellite dishes, which is uh, today's modern day uh, dish network, direct TV, those types of services uh, that are allowed. And of course, um, that really worked well for uh, mobile applications also because the antenna size got so much smaller. Uh, and of course, as we continue to progress, uh, we've moved on into other wireless technologies such as Wi-Fi, uh, 4G LTE uh, and other wireless broadband communications uh, as we sit now. What impressed us the most is that Weingart produces all its components in-house, from small metal brackets to the satellite dishes. And where most companies buy their circuit boards, usually from overseas, Weingart produces all its own boards right here in Burlington, Iowa, as Grant explains. Depending on the circuit board, it of course goes through more complex circuit boards. We'll go through uh, uh, various stages of tests throughout the process. And what we're checking for is all the data and information that's moved throughout the board uh, to make a, uh, let's take a satellite system that moves around and automatically locks onto the correct satellite. Uh, we want to make sure that that's functioning correctly before we even place it into the product itself. So as that's uh, populated and built, uh, we tested at various stages to make sure that uh, all connections are there, uh, all the um, RF components are in the right place, and then it moves on throughout the assembly process. Speaking of testing, not only does every circuit board get tested, but every satellite antenna gets operationally tested right on the assembly line prior to being boxed and shipped. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves here, so let's take a short break. And when we come back, 
will take a tour through this sprawling wine guard facility. Aquacam Tossins, so fast and easy to use, it could seem like a game. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. Welcome back. Of course, we're here mainly to see what goes into building RV satellite antennas. But, can you guess how many different satellite antenna systems WineGuard actually builds? And of course, we not only make uh, uh, satellite antennas for the RV industry, uh, but we also make them for um, oil and gas exploration, uh, remote communities that just can't receive, um, you know, any type of uh, TV or uh, internet access. Um, so we even make them for uh, remote uh, residences. So all in all, I'd say, you know, we're well over 20, 30 plus uh, on different types of uh, satellite antennas in general. And that's uh, both for TV and for internet type of services. It doesn't matter what size dish, they all start from a roll of new steel, then large presses cut and stamp out tens of thousands of dishes each week. Also in the same department, other presses are stamping out and shaping smaller parts like brackets and arms. By the way, all those small pieces of metal scraps you see coming off the presses get recycled and could possibly come right back here as a new roll of steel. The dishes next go to be chemically cleaned and into the paint booth where they get an electrostatic paint finish. Then they go into the oven for drying. Once out of the oven, the dishes are silk screened with appropriate logos. Once stamped and shaped, all the smaller brackets and components go to a different area where they are submerged in a chemical cleaner, then get a chemical weather protective coating. Later, all these components will come together in their respective assembly areas. As we mentioned at the beginning of this story, WineGuard believes in doing virtually everything in-house. And that philosophy includes the customer service department, as Rand explains. We actually have uh, over uh, 20 technicians and customer service agents who sit right here uh, in Burlington. So they understand the, uh, the assembly and the, the factory itself and everything that's going into that. Uh, they're all trained uh, before they start on all of our wide array of products. And um, that, that uh, close vicinity right here, as opposed to outsourcing the uh, customer service to uh, somewhere else in the country or even outside of the country, uh, we think is also much more efficient and gives the customer uh, a much better experience because uh, the people understand the product here and they, and they know um, what they're talking about as opposed to having to talk to somebody outside our company walls um, only to have to wait to get a, a, a you know an answer on what's going on etc so um, we really we really like to give as much customer service as possible to make that ownership experience a good one to learn more about WineGuard and watch Grant's complete interview including what's coming up in the future visit our website at rollingontv.com from off-the-road adventure camping to luxurious full-time RVing and everything in between, Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, 
visit forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcole, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norco refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norco RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norco.com. Having cancer shouldn't mean giving up the joys of childhood. Care Camps helps children with cancer remember what it's like to just be a kid. Royal on TV and Forest River are supporting Care Camps with our special raffle. With your donation, you're entered to win this one-of-a-kind Forest River No Boundaries travel trailer. It's a chance for these deserving kids to enjoy themselves and a chance for you to win this eye-catching Super Novo. If you enjoy camping, don't you think these kids should have the same chance too? For more information, visit our website at rollingontv.com. Hi everyone, I'm Kate Dunbar, the Campground Gourmet for Rolling On TV. Today we are talking sweet. Sweet for breakfast or sweet for dessert. This is a recipe that is perfect. If you've never tried Camp Dutch Oven cooking before, it doesn't get any simpler than this. We're gonna be using a Camp Dutch Oven, I'm using my Dutch oven cook table, and we're using fresh fruit, some apples, some pears, and some granola. It is a little bit healthy, but you'll never know it with the sweet flavor of maple syrup, candied ginger, and that warm cinnamon spice. Let's get to the ingredients and then the cooking technique. I have some honey crisp apples that this cute little bee is uh, tasting right away for me. I have some canned pears in pear juice. I have some melted butter, some maple syrup, some slivered almonds, some candied ginger, and like I said, granola and cinnamon. So let's add this all together and then I'm gonna show you why I'm not preheating a Camp Dutch oven for this. I'm gonna add the honey crisp apples. I have three of them that have been chopped up. Like I said, I have that can of pears in pear juice. And now I'm gonna add in the almonds, the candied ginger. This is always a little bit sticky, so mixing it a bit right now, we'll get all those little pieces distributed throughout this dish. Now I'm gonna add in half of the granola. We're gonna add it in now so it has that time to soak up the juices from the pears and from the apples. And then we're also gonna save this for the topping so there's that nice crunchy bit at the top of it that gets all nice and golden and toasty. We're gonna to add some cinnamon. Ooh, the wind's taking it away with me today. About a teaspoon and a half. We're gonna mix this up really well. And now we're gonna add in a quarter cup of maple syrup. This is our sweet. If you don't like maple syrup, you can always add honey. Just mix this around. And we're gonna let this sit for a minute while we prep our Camp Dutch oven. Now, like I've said, I already have the fire going. I have my charcoal chimney that still has some hot coals in it that we'll be adding to the top. But why we're not preheating this is because I want everything to warm up at once. We're not searing, we're not sauteing. We want to just cook this slowly, Camp Dutch oven style. But there's a trick. Using a deep Dutch oven is the perfect way to make a crisp or a cobbler because there's a lot of room for steam and that's what you want with this. We want to trap as much steam as possible. And I'm using parchment paper. You don't have to if you don't want to. It's an easy way to help with cleanup. You can also line your Camp Dutch oven with foil. It's no problem. Just take a sheet, press it right in, get it down all the way and then take another sheet, open it up, and do it in the opposite direction so you have all the walls covered. So now we're gonna take our apples and pears and granola and ginger, the maple syrup, 
and the cinnamon and add this right to it. Get every little bit. You don't want to leave anything in the bowl. There we go. All right, set that aside. Now it's time to just press everything down into all the corners and then level it out, smooth the top out. All right, let's take the remainder of the granola and sprinkle it evenly. And I have four tablespoons of melted butter. I'm just gonna swirl this in the pan really quick and I'm gonna drizzle this right over the top. Not only is it gonna add delicious flavor, but it's gonna help with the browning for the granola and the apples. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna place the lid on this, making certain that the paper is sticking out, pressing it down, and now let's go over to the Camp Dutch oven table and let's see how this is cooked. Okay, so I've brought the Camp Dutch oven that has our apples and pears and crystallized ginger and that beautiful granola over to my Camp Dutch oven table. I have more heat at the base of this Camp Dutch oven than I do on top. I have just a little sprinkling of it because I don't want to force a ton of heat down through the Camp Dutch oven because that would cause the granola to burn. And that is what I'm trying to avoid here today. And that is what I'm trying to show you today. So by having a stronger heat source down at the bottom, it's gonna cook those apples and force heat up through the Camp Dutch oven. I'm gonna give this about 10 minutes and then we'll come on back and I'll show you how to do a rotation and check. I'm gonna put on my glove. I'm gonna lift up the bale wire handle I'm gonna pick this up off of the stand and I'm gonna rotate it. And then I'm gonna take my lid lifter and I'm gonna give the lid an additional 45 degree turn. And now we're gonna let this go 10 more minutes and it should be done. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh my gosh, it is perfectly golden all across the top. The apples still have their pretty pink color, and that's what I love about Honeycrisp apples. They're gonna keep their shape, and more importantly, they're gonna keep that beautiful pinky red exterior color. I'm Kate Dunbar, the Campground Gourmet for Rolling On TV. Cook great memories, and I'll see you at the campfire. Bye. Am I glad I use Aquacam? Maybe chili wasn't the best idea. Aquacam, the most powerful odor control available and the number one seller for over 50 years. Storage space is extremely limited on some RVs, which means space for tools and RV supplies is limited too. When that's the case, you need to scale back and only keep what you consider is absolutely essential. I'm fortunate to have an entire exterior storage compartment dedicated to what I consider are essential tools and RV supplies to have on hand during RV trips. Earlier this year when I was doing some cleaning and reorganizing, I discovered tools in my storage compartment that I haven't used since I put them there. I like to have the right tool for the job, but I decided to be more practical and organize my storage compartment with tools and RV supplies that really are essential. Let's take a look at the tools and supplies that made the cut. Scaling back on my RV toolbox was difficult, but in the end it eliminated some excess weight and opened up additional storage space for other supplies. For starters, I have a 3 8 inch ratchet and socket set. There are occasions when I need a socket set, and what's nice about this particular set is it also includes a general purpose screwdriver with all the various screwdriver tips commonly used in RV construction. Speaking of ratchets and sockets, I keep a half inch drive ratchet, extension, and socket to remove the water heater drain plug. 
I like to drain the water heater tank after every trip and now I don't need to go hunting for the tools to do it. I keep an assortment of common hand tools like standard and metric wrenches, an adjustable wrench, needle nose pliers, regular pliers, vice grips, diagonal cutters, a hammer, and a utility knife. Something I never leave home without is a cordless drill and the battery charger. A cordless drill is good for drilling, tightening or loosening screws or nuts and bolts, and if you have the right attachment, you can raise and lower stabilizer jacks. To go along with the cordless drill, I keep an assortment of drill bits, nut drivers, and other types of bits on hand. Another handy tool is a battery filler. When lead acid batteries are charged, water can evaporate and it needs to be replaced with distilled water. Checking and watering batteries goes a long way to extending the life of your RV batteries. Additional tools and supplies for battery maintenance are gloves, safety glasses, and some sandpaper. I also keep a couple of funnels in the RV. One is for adding fluids like engine oil and the other one is for sanitizing the RV water system. We keep a couple of flashlights inside the RV, but I like to keep a good small LED flashlight in my toolbox compartment too. Now let's look at some essential RV supplies. I'm not talking about RV supplies like holding tank treatments and disposable gloves. I'm talking about essential tools and supplies needed to help keep the RV in top operating condition when you're on the road. Let's start with a quality tire inflation gauge. You not only want an accurate inflation gauge, but you want one with a dual foot design and one that is capable of checking high air pressure like what is typically found in motorhome tires. It's important that you know what the tire inflation is for your RV tires and that you check the tires on a regular basis, especially when you're on the road. Store your tire inflation gauge in a protective case and away from other tools where it could get banged around. Next is a digital voltmeter. This is absolutely essential. You can use it for a quick check of the battery's state of charge. You can test 12 volt DC circuits and 12 volt fuses, and you can check 120 volt AC circuits and outlets. I keep some spare fuses on hand just in case. In addition to a voltmeter, I keep a digital line monitor in the RV. You can use it to test the faulty wiring at the campground before plugging the RV in and you can use it to monitor AC voltage during your trip. This particular model also monitors frequency when the generator is running. The digital line monitor comes in handy, but I rely on a quality surge protector to monitor and protect the RV from electrical problems at the pedestal. There are numerous brands available with different features and capabilities. I personally use a surge guard product on our RV. I keep a caulk gun and a tube of sealant on hand. I also have a roof repair patch just in case. The patch can be used to repair a tear in the roof or in an awning. In a separate storage container, I keep some common electrical connectors, a roll of wire, electrical tape, Teflon tape, zip ties, a good wire stripper, cutter, and crimping tool, a 12 volt test light, and an assortment of nuts, bolts, screws, and washers. I keep a pair of safety glasses on hand for when I'm using power tools or checking the batteries. I always have this portable lithium battery jump box and a basic road hazard kit. I keep a can of spray lubricant in the RV. It can be used for anything on the RV that needs lubrication and it helps stop any annoying squeaks and squeals on the RV. I have shop towels and of course a roll of duct tape. Duct tape can always get you out of a jam. I'm sure there are other tools and supplies that could be on the list, but I have always gotten by with whatever needs to be done on the road with these tools and essential RV supplies. Happy camping. We hope you enjoyed this week's show. For more information on anything you've seen on the program, along with additional videos, stories, and news, plus some great contests, visit our website at rollingontv.com. And remember, you can also watch Rolling On TV on Roku, Amazon Fire, Vimeo, and YouTube, as well as on any of our station's streaming media services. For complete coverage information, click on the Where to Watch link on our website. As usual, this has been another fun production.